testing a claim about two means with pooled variances um, has the potential to be probably the longest overall problem that we'll consider in this class. Um, we might have one, uh, another one when we look at regression that could be a little bit longer. <clears throat> but there's going to be a lot of steps. So this first example, we're going to work completely from start to finish. Then the others, we're going to kind of skip through some of those steps and just look at some, some of the numerical results and some conclusions. So we have information on the visitors to Utah Welcome Centers. We want to test the claim that Utah sees, on average, more tourists in summer months than in summer months. So we'll begin by assessing the normality of these data sets. by testing the following hypotheses. So our null hypothesis for the Shapiro-Wilk test is that our sample data comes from a normally distributed population. The alternative hypothesis that our sample data comes from a non-normally distributed population And we need to conduct that hypothesis test on both of our samples. So we can do it by selecting STAT, goodness of fit, normality test. If you hold control and click, or hold command and click if you're using an Apple computer, select both of those data sets, and we can conduct the Shapiro-Wilk test on both data sets at the same time to generate these two p-values, so 0.0857 and 0.9876. So our p-values are 0 0.0857 and 0 0.9876, which are both not less than in this case, greater than our value for alpha, which equals 0 0.01. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis for both samples. So there is not sufficient evidence for either sample to reject the original assumption that these samples come from normally distributed populations. So that means the conditions are met. To test, claim, to test a claim about means. And we have, in this case, independent samples. So we'll use the two-sample t-test to test the claim. But the first thing we need to answer before we actually even get into testing the claim, so we've already conducted one hypothesis test, just verifying conditions. Now we're going to need to run a second test that verifies that the conditions are met to run a pooled test. So first, though, we'll test to see if the conditions are met to run a pooled t-test. So to do this, we'll test the hypotheses, or the null hypothesis, that sigma squared 1 divided by sigma squared 2 is equal to 1, and the alternative hypothesis well, that didn't work out quite right sigma squared 2 is not equal to 1. So testing the, the hypotheses that those variances are either equal to each other or somehow different. So to test that, we'll select stat, variance stats, and then two sample. So here we'll have the option for with data or with summary. So with summary would mean we're just given 
the statistical measurements. With data means we're given the actual list of data sets. So depending on how that informa information is provided, we can use one of two options there. So for two sample variances, we'll select variable variance one or variable one, variable two. Our hypotheses are already set to what we want those to be and click compute. So we get a p-value of 0 0.4902. Our p-value is 0 0.4902, which is greater than our value for alpha, which again is 0 0.01. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that sigma squared one over sigma squared two is not equal to one, or I'm sorry, is equal to one if we're failing to reject the null hypothesis. So there is not sufficient evidence to reject the original assumption that the variances are equal. So the conditions are met to conduct a pooled t-test. So we've conducted two hypothesis tests, but have not yet got to actually testing the claim and the problem. So all of this so far has just been set up so that now we can actually test the hypotheses that we're interested in which in this case is the claim that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero, and the alternative hypothesis that mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. So we'll select t stats to sample with data we'll select variable one and variable two. And since we know that, or since we came to the conclusion that our variances are equal, we can leave that pool variances option checked, update our alternative hypothesis, and click compute to get a p-value of 0 0.0002. So in this case, our p-value is less than alpha, which is equal to 0 0.01. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. So we're saying there is sufficient evidence to conclude that on average, Utah sees higher numbers of visitors in summer months than in non-summer months. So, so far this video is up to about a little over eight and a half minutes. Quite a lot of work to put into a single problem, but all necessary steps First, to verify the conditions that we can test claims about means. Then to see, is it appropriate to run a pooled t-test? And then to actually test the hypotheses that will allow us to respond to the original claim. So for testing means with pooled variances, we could have as many as three separate or really four separate hypothesis tests since we had to conduct the Shapiro-Wilk test on two separate samples. So two Shapiro-Wilk tests, a test about the variances, and then a test about the means. So again, a very lengthy problem, but all critical steps, important steps to getting us to the best possible answers to the problem that we're trying to consider.